Right, hello, welcome back to another uh, video tutorial. I had a request this week of how to do objects blending in with terrain. Um, there's a couple of ways to do that. I'm going to show you a way now uh, and then another way probably next week. Um, but this is a bit more of a, a general case of how do we get a, a nice blend between solid objects. And that's the thing we want to do. So I've just got a simple plane here, uh, or a simple box, uh, and a sphere. And I'm going to show how we can kind of blend these two together. So, um, firstly, I'm going to introduce a uh, material node that it comes with, and that's called uh, Dither Temple AA. Um, it's just a function that exists in the editor by default, uh, and it does a dither fade. Um, so, what is a dither fade? Well, if we have a quick look at Google Images, um, this is a dithering pattern. So, effectively, um, back in the day when you could only render one color on a screen, uh, if you wanted to make grayscales, we do that by dithering. So it's different densities of black and white dots, um, and that creates kind of white, black, and then gradient along it. So um, that's dither fading, um, and we can use that here in uh, in our material. So um, if I just take my sphere and apply this dither fade material to it, it's very simple, straight color, dither fade, and then I'm used a an opacity parameter. Um, we can immediately see, see on the video, um, that that is faded out. So what's it doing? Well, it's either basically displaying the pixels to be on or off, but doing it in such a pattern, we get a uh, kind of half visible um, object, half not visible object. And what happens is the temporal AA, or anti-aliasing, um, that Unreal has in it, it sort of blends one frame with the next, so over a couple of frames you get a nice, soft, smooth thing. There is a little bit of ghosting move things. You can see there's kind of like a bit of a few seconds, a couple of seconds delay where it doesn't look quite right. That's more visible there. Um, Here, yeah, the white helps to blend it. Um, so it's not perfect, and obviously, if you turn off anti aliasing, you just see the dither pattern. Um, so uh, it has some limitations, but uh, it can be quite useful. What's the advantage of all this stuff? Well, it makes a sort of semi-translucent object, but it does it in such a way that's very cheap. Just turning things on and off. Um, note this is a masked material. Set this to opaque. Not doing anything. In the, uh, don't get access to the mask channel there. So it needs to be masked. But it is very cheap because of that. Masked materials are either on or off. Um, work really well for cutouts and things, uh, but don't give us this semi-translucent uh, look unless we use this kind of dither fading um, various uh, limitations that has with that, with, uh, with anti-aliasing and things, a bit of, of ghosting. So that would work, that will give us a bit of a blend here. Um, there is a slightly different but very similar thing we could do, and that is not to use a uh, dither and an opacity mask, it's used the pixel depth offset. Grab my sphere again. Material on, just open up and have a look. So what's happening here? Well I'm using here is I'm using the pixel depth offset. That do. File this without the there. We see I change this value. Default is zero, no offset, fine. Um, as we add values to that what it's effectively doing is rend pushing the where the sphere is rendered in the depth buffer back. And we're pushing it back. You can see it's behind its own shadow, which is a bit weird. Uh, and you can get behind the box completely off into the skybox. I don't know if you skybox. Yep, you can get behind the skybox as well. So this is a way uh, of kind of like affecting the depth buffer, uh, just hacking the renderer. Um, and it works quite nicely for, for various things. If I just visualize the depth buffer. This is the scene depth. So you can see it's kind of like a, a grayscale representation of the depth of the scene. As you move away from objects, they get brighter. See that? Ignore the banding in the sky, that's uh, rounding errors, I believe, just because these are very, very high numbers. Um, but if we now come in and upset and, and add to our offset value, see that's going to get slowly brighter, brighter because we're pushing it way into the depth and then starts doing the flickering as it gets into those that banding area. So why would we do this? Well hopefully we'll clear later. 
Uh, what we can do with this, we use the same temple dither pattern. Um, offset our pixels in the depth buffer a little bit and randomly. Um, as long as our offset value is nice and low, see getting that same kind of blending. But rather than building it with a master material, this time it's a completely opaque material. Um, that pushes things back, and we're just kind of like I say, um, breaking up that hard line, a bit of softness. Um, doing it with the depth buffer this way, seeing you're starting to get the stippling everywhere as it's kind of pushing the whole thing back, getting into its own shadow. Um, so, what we need is some way to artificially or artificially procedurally generate the, uh, the intersection between these two objects. Um, and there is a way we can do this cool distance field. So in your project, this is a, an optional thing. Distance field. Uh, generate mesh distance fields. Um, they're useful for lighting uh, and these kind of material effects. Um, they are quite expensive in terms of not your runtime cost, but in terms of your memory cost. There's quite a big thing here. It says it will increase mesh build times and memory usage. They're quite a big thing. Um, to store um, lots of documentation on it, lots of stuff been written about it, but um, I have already got them enabled, so let's have a quick look at how we can use this last material, which is distance to right, yes, fix my problem um, so let's just start with this again off this material scratch so um a distance field, field gradient gradient I want distance to uh, distance to nearest surface that's the node I want um so what does this do well it's going to give us the distance from the pixel we're rendering the position so if I go into that is assumed to be plugged in so the pixel we're rendering how close is it to the nearest surface I just plug that into emissive I'm going to make material black so I can see for this. See here, we're getting black and white values, and it's giving us an approximation sort of what's right. But actually, what's happening here, we're setting these black spots at the top. It's affecting its own distance field, as it were. So, because we're because it's in the distance field and it's sampling the distance field, you're getting this kind of um, undulating error here little errors at the top. That's not what we should expect, but if we select the object and just go to the settings, which is this one, effect distance field lighting. So by default this is turned on, that's why I just had that little break a minute ago. We want to turn this off. Now it's very difficult to see down here. It's actually a black line. I'm just gonna put some so if I uh, divide value But you can see that there's now actually a gradient where black is that edge and, uh, and these values are going greater than one. So it's actually giving us that distance, so it's giving us the intersection, which is exactly what we want. So I'm just going to build up a little bit of control for it. Um, so, copy what I'm for. Uh, firstly I'm going to subtract an offset. Might be that the uh, value or the, the intersection we want wants to be offset off the ground. So we're just going to have a little bit of an offset value for it. Then I'm going to clamp it. Value max distance. Say five or something. Um, so now we're only going to get values between zero at the surface intersection and then five at a maximum of five distance away. Uh, and anything bigger than that gets going to get clamped back to five. I just divide by five divide by the max distance again. Now unitize that that zero to, or normalized it to that zero to one. So let's test this. You can see that increase the max distance, increasing where that white point sort of starts is. Uh, and if I increase this offset that little gradient up and down. So I've got a set of controls for this. Um also added in a power 
myself a contrast. Zero, that's a terrible idea. And now I can change how that gradient fall off works. Um, and now we have a black and white mask, and we can use that uh, and say it's basically based on where the, uh, the the intersection between those surfaces are. So, and we can use that with either of the techniques. So if we just try it to be using a mask, it's already set to that. Set this in. But well, if I just set it to, into the mask for now, that it will clear that off, and we'll see a hard edge. Um, mask thing has a hard edge, so we've. It's offset from the ground. Actually, it's still hard edge. That's no good. Um, so I'm going to bring in that dither again. Let's use that. I shall hope you can see is a nice stippled dither fade blend. Bottom. After a couple of frames, it will start to blend out. So um, small values are going to work. We don't want to be too high. Um, once these are actually textured objects, this is like an object blending into the ground or something, you're going to see uh, these things hidden a lot better by the texture. Two white objects like this and a flat and curved. Um, it's about the worst case you could possibly imagine like this. But it's definitely softening that up. If I go to... Um, you can see that really hard edge between the two objects. Just start blending. Works quite nicely. Uh, one thing you might notice, though, is we've lost our shadow. Um, our object, our sphere, isn't intersecting with our, um, our our cube anymore, so it doesn't want to render our shadow. Uh, I'm using a dynamic light here. Um, well, that's not much good. We can't have an object without a shadow. So rather than using a mask material, uh, dither, there, I'm going to use the sort depth offset. Shadow back, um, and then if I plug the values in, scaling them up. Well, here yeah, it's not working as we want. Uh, it's the wrong way round. So the mask, the pixel depth needs to be inverted. I'm just going to clamp this. Saturate node. Saturate clamps things between 0 and 1. Uh, it's just an inbuilt function for most graphics cards, or all graphics cards, I presume. Um, and now we can do a 1 minus. Or we do any kind of 1 minus inverting. Get it to saturate just in case. It should all be 0 to 1 values because we've done the maths to make it that, but since it's free, it's worth doing. All the previews don't work because the distance field type things in there don't work. And we've got our shadow, we've got a nice soft edge here. Just that. It's not perfect. It's a bit of a um, hack, I guess. Um, we're kind of playing with the depth buffer to make it hide this edge. But um, but yeah, works. Um, hopefully that's helpful. Useful for any kind of like generic blending of two solid objects together. Um, obviously, it has a cost. Um, if we compare this. Um, I think both techniques are basically the same cost because they're doing the same math, but back to a masked this one in. It's thing. It's similar costs. So, um, so obviously it has a cost versus just using a normal fake object. Change that back. Pile on this will just disappear because it's the same cost. Okay. So yes, there is obviously a cost to it. Um, don't just use it on everything unless you can afford it. Um, uh, yeah, I hope that's helpful. Next time I'm going to go over maybe doing a bit more of an advanced blend using some actual terrain materials. Um, but as a sort of intro of how you can blend objects together. That useful. Uh, as always, any questions, comments, etc., uh, let me know, um, and yeah, I'll see you all next time.